welcome class to your online virtual massage therapy instruction. So today I will be telling you um, a few facts about massage that you should already know from my last video. This will just kind of freshen up your memory and um, help you to study for the exam that's coming up pretty soon. So, I would like to go over the four basic types of massage, which is affleurage, patrissage, tapotement, and, um, what's the fourth one? <laughs> right, um, basic Swedish. So, you uh, are going to recall that we've spoken about these things before. Basically, the first one is um, consistent of all three. So, Swedish would be consistent of E, P, and T, okay? F, R, P, and T, and development consecutively. So, uh, and normally you would start off with F, R, H, which is basically where you would swoop your hands in certain uh, upward or downward strokes or motions, as such, uh, demonstrated here. And that enables you to get venous blood flow, as well as move around the lymphatic system, circulatory system, and it milks some of the uh, bones and underlying tissues and muscles um, as well. Not as efficiently as petrosage would, however, uh, this enables you to at least begin warming up the skin and the body for preparation of a medium to deeper type of massage. So, before I go into that, make sure you guys have read up on this manual. And this will help you to get where you need to in terms of developing and marketing your business. Okay, so uh, basically it is an online world nowadays and this will enable you to figure that part out. So you should have already read chapters 7 and 10, which 7 is about managing your finances. So basically, attitudes about money, tracking personal spending, budget and massage pricing, break-even point, balance sheet, p and profit and loss. Destination versus paperwork, out of control, advertising, scrutinizing your bills, expenses versus income, managing inventory, taxes. you know, um, that will be a 
very crucial part of your experience here until you get your certification because without that you wouldn't really know where to begin, you know, you kind of have to begin bringing in the phone calls and bringing people to your door to begin doing this practice um, and if you don't have that, I mean, there's really almost nearly I shouldn't say no point to your training, I mean, you still will learn a lot through this program, however what is the point truly if you cannot help the world, right? so that's what I'm gonna try to do for you alright, so the second one is about that I've mentioned and this one can be used uh, with uh, different tools um, to need a deeper into the uh, tissues and muscles and the skeletal system oh, sorry uh, but basically it's like kneading and pressing on dough if you can imagine or play dough of some sort any type of dough even squishy slime for example so where you manipulate the different layers and really press hard with your fingers and use your thumbs and uh, go over so that will be a bit challenging to demonstrate here but the first one was more of a glide on smooth type of action the second one is more see what I'm doing? grasping and moving because this doesn't really move this much when you do this, look how much it moves. You can tend it to your favor to go wherever which way you want. And this type of massage is crucial because if you don't do this, you're not able to help the client at all with whatever issue they come in with. If they would like a simple type of relaxation massage, then that's all you need to do pretty much is this type. But if you would like to have them receive the full benefit of the massage, then you will have to do this type of um, manipulation, okay? So, if they have an issue with their ulnaris um, muscle, then this type of massage would be required. This would just glide over it and not really do anything. All this is meant to do is get you started get you to warm up the tissue, that is it, and get them familiar to your touch so that they're not shocked when you start going into this mode, okay? Now, there's many types of subcategories of each category, um, like Petrasage has skin rolling, where you just pinch with your fingertips and roll the flesh, okay? That may be uncomfortable, for some clients, always ask before you do that and never roll over the spine. You don't want to do that. Um, different types are kneading, as I've mentioned, where you just, it's kind of like a back and forth motion, so like kneading dough. And then there's more where you use your thumbs and sort of really press in and dig in. You can even use this part your forearm and wrist, or your elbows, although if they request a light massage, guess what, this is not light, and it will be very painful and uncomfortable for them, especially when they don't request a deep massage, and you do that, it comes as an even more shock to them, uh, so always ask, even if they request deep, some people request deep and not really knowing what deep truly is and what it entails and then you dig in with this and they say yowza, never mind, I would like medium always ask before you really dig in and if you dig in, ask during it as well don't just stay silent um, we do want to keep speaking to an absolute bare minimum for their utmost benefit. However, if they are quite talkative, you know, minimize your vocabulary. Yeah. If they are maybe not responsive, perhaps 
don't try to encourage them to speak, however, just keep brief with your responses back as well to kind of maintain that equilibrium during the session because sometimes it can go on for an hour and if someone is chatty Cathy the entire time, are they truly really relaxed? So that's when you kind of want to hint to them that this is meant for their time off, so try to mention it in a way where it won't insult their feelings and slowly they will get the hint and realize that they should perhaps enjoy the moment rather than feeling pressured to speak every minute. Um, it's an art to be able to do that and wean someone off hyperactive to uh, a sort of um, parasympathetic response. Um, some people are so used to being active in sense, sensory mode takes a skill, a certain amount of time, of practice to sort of train people how to get to that base where they focus on their breath and that's a great thing you can ask as well as let's take the time to let go of that thought right now that we may be encountering and just breathe it out, you know. They have the headrest over here cradling on their face so they have plenty of room to breathe. need to concern yourself for that. And you will notice on their back when they breathe, it goes up and down slightly. It's different for everyone. You will get to see the breath usually in the upper back, but for some people when they breathe more into the belly, it's the lower back to the middle back area where you see the spike. So, after you figure that part out, and you go over the whole effage and the petrosage part, then you go on to the development, which is near the end when you've completed your body work on them, and you feel like they have received the most benefit they possibly could. Development entails of things such as shaking and vibrating where you're kind of just getting ready to wake the client up and you're holding on to them and just pushing your hands back and forth or just shoving them gently with your palms and fingertips. You can even use this part of your hands and just gently crack each up, little slap motions or do some cupping where you hold your fingers as if you're doing Reiki healing and just boop, 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 boop. tap 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 over their skin and it should be like a loud sound like that or you can even do slapping and just flat palmed that's even louder <laughs> but don't jolt them into that <laughs> immediately um, new beginners always make <laughs> this mistake massage, which is compression, and compression usually you start off with before a flower, so yes, there's even a massage before that. And that's basically where you're just gripping and pressing as such. Squeezing, in a sense, it's a type of pedressage, but not really. Um, but this really just gets your energy ingrained with theirs and integrated work on them and get a sense of where they may be having problem areas. And compression is the number one way to detect what they're going through in the 
first place. And Flourage does that as well, but compression will really do the job and you will get to feel um, what their systems feel like and then you will get a sense of, okay, this is where we're having issues here. And before you do any heavy work, always stretch them out as well. Rotate their cuffs, their joints. Um, you can't just go in and dig in without doing that first because they will have um, numbness or tingling or pain. Um, if you do that again, it shocks the system. So, um, especially someone who doesn't do regular monthly, weekly massages, if it's especially their first time doing that, then you definitely want to start slow and do the whole process. Now, if you have a client that you're familiar with and they've done this a hundred times before with you, then you know sometimes it's okay to just jump in and do the things you do and if they can handle the uncomfortable feeling of that, but you still want to warm them up at least a little bit because they're probably coming in from the cold outside, you know, or they're just tense or nervous that day, you know, you still want to loosen up. You can't just immediately start pressing with your fingertips and doing deep kinesiology work, you know. But, um, of course, if any of my students have any questions at any time, they're free to email me. Um, the comment below. Okay, so make sure you do that. And, again, you can use different tools, like I mentioned, like this, which is a roller. This is more for deeper work. I would say medium to deep work. Um, this will really press on deep into the skin and get problem areas. This is great to do along with any other routine like yoga. And you can even use a mallet hammer to uh, get those problem areas as well. But if you have a hard time maneuvering tissue, this will do a great job for you. All you need to do is hold on to this grip tight and apply as much even pressure as possible and this will untangle whatever it is you struggled with tangling to begin with and you'd be amazed that these work just as good if not better than our own hand scan, especially if you're on your fourth client of the day, you're sore, tired, maybe arthritis in your joints. This will do this for you without pressuring you, okay? But do not ever your entire routine of just using tools. You still want to use some of your hands unless you're fully incapable of doing so and your clients are okay with it and they know you for that routine, then it's fine to use just tools if that's the only resource you have and you need to uh, do your job, you know. Make sure you're trained well in doing these. Uh, we're going to go over that in the next course. But again, this is just a refresher for all of you. Most of you here um, will already have heard of this since the uh, chapter one, chapter two um, course that we went over. So make sure you do your homework and your assigned colorings and readings, as well as responding below to let me know that you've watched this so that you can get graded and marked for attendance. I look forward to seeing all of you in the next one. Hopefully you enjoyed this, and if you like more of these demo kind of videos, uh, you let me know, and we have so many more tutorials to watch. Uh, thank you for joining me, and um, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share, playlist, tap the notification bell to be notified of new courses. Bye now.